Hey guys, Simon Power here with another uh, piano lesson. Today we're looking at Fira Lise, uh, the very, very famous uh, piece by Beethoven. Um, right, this is one I've been working on with some of my students and I realised that actually this is a really great kind of beginner piece uh, and I, really anybody could learn this piece. This is one of those pieces you could show to almost an absolute beginner or if say someone was to, had to only been playing for say six months or a year, um, it's it's definitely one that I think is actually accessible to to most people. Now the full piece, which was uh, 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 is called a bagatelle, um, that is a bit harder to do because it's actually the the main part that people know, like the main theme, is only one part of the piece. There's uh, the the main the, the main the main very famous bit that people know uh, the. Part. So I'll call that the main theme. Uh, that kind of starts off the piece, and then there's another kind of section in a major key, um, which is a slightly more kind of uh, fast, showy off uh, section. Uh, and then it comes back to the main theme again, and then it goes to another kind of darker kind of sounding section, is a bit very kind of dark dramatic section, and then it comes back again to our nice romantic theme, and then it kind of finishes off. So the entire piece, I would say, is more for an intermediate to advanced player. However, if you just want to learn the main theme, I think almost anybody could learn this. So let's get into it today. Um, I'm going to start off right by just playing the right hand. Okay, I think it might be good just start off with the right hand. Just learn that. Um, okay, so with this piece, we're going to be kind of it has quite a wide range, right? Uh, so if you're if you're confused about what what octave we're in. Uh, you can just see here, I've put, just, uh, put on these stickers just for reference points. So this C right here is C4, and this is middle C. Okay, this C is C5, this is high C, and this C here is C3, that's low C. Okay, so let's get into the right hand. So we're starting, okay, first time I'll just go through the notes, and then second time maybe I'll give you, I'll give you the fingering. So... We're starting up in 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 the high octave here, or I'll call it, or, or the fifth octave. So uh, we're starting on this E, which I'll call E five, because it's the E that's right, that's just to the right of C five. Okay, so here we go. So we're going E, D sharp, E, D sharp, E, B, D, C, A. Okay, then we've got a bit of a leap here, right? We go to middle C, we go C, E, A, B, okay, then another bit of a leap back down to middle E, E, G sharp, B, high C, okay. Then the next phrase, another bit of a leap down here to uh, E, E4, we go leap up an octave to E5, and then again we repeat uh, this this phrase: D sharp, E, D sharp, E, B, D, C, A. Leap down to middle C, C, E, A, B, and then leap down to middle D, and then leap up to high C, then B, A. Okay, let me play that truth here. Okay, so that's the right hand on its own. Just a few little notes on the fingering. So we start, I'll start, I start with a five uh, on the high E, and then I use the four then for that D sharp. So it goes, uh, and then I use my two on the B. And then again, see here, we wanna have good kind of, so we wanna have good fingering. So this is A position fingering. When I say A position fingering, I mean that the thumb is on A. Um, so then two on B. Four on D, three on C, and then one on A. Okay. Then we have this kind of arpeggio line here. 
And what we don't want to do, we don't want to use like one finger for everything. Because we'll have a very uh, staccato, detached sound. We want a beautiful flowing legato sound there. So we need to give each note its own finger. So the way I do that is I've got my one on C, two on E, then four, and again, a little bit of a stretch here, four on A, and then I've got my five ready for the B, okay? Right, and you can see here, my hand stays still and my fingers do the work. Okay, and then, uh, okay, oh, and then again, a kind of an E major arpeggio here, and I do this one on E, on G sharp, three on B, and then four on C. Okay, now some people would do that like this uh, one, three, four, five. However, if you do that, um, oh, actually, yeah, no, that would work. Actually, yeah, okay, that's a bit of an alternative fingering there. That would work, actually. Okay, then again, one on E, five on high E. Four on the D sharp, then two, four, three, one, one, two, four, five, and then here one on the D, five on the high C, four on the B, and then three on the A. Okay, that's the right hand. Okay, so now we're going to match together the right and the left hand. Okay, so when we're doing this, let's start off in the right position. So we're gonna start off with our left hand with the five on A2, and with the five in the right hand on E5, okay? Uh, also, I'm gonna put, see here in the left hand, I put my two on that E ready to go, and the one here stretched to the uh, A here, ready to go. Okay, so I'm just in position, ready to go. Here we go, okay, so we're gonna go E, D sharp, E, D sharp, E, B, D, C, and then we do A in the right hand, A in the left hand. Okay, then E left hand, then A right, uh, then A left hand, then in the right hand, C, E, A, and then our left hand leaps down to this A, or E here, sorry, E2, and we're gonna play B in the right hand, E in the left hand. Okay, then E, then G sharp, then right hand, E, G sharp, B, and then C in the right hand, A in the left hand. Then A, then in the right hand, E, leap an octave, high E, D sharp, E, D sharp, E, B, D, C. Then we match together, A in the right hand and A in the left hand. Then left hand, E, then A, then in the right hand, C, middle C, E, A, then we match together, B and uh, E in the left hand. Sorry, B in the right hand, E in the left hand. Then in the left hand, E, then G sharp. And then in the right hand, D, then up, leap up to a C, high C, then a B, and then A in the right hand, A in the left hand. Okay, now for the left hand. So we're starting here, A2, then E, then A3, then E2, E3, then G sharp 3, and then A, E, A, again. Okay, and so we do that, that's really, this is spelling out like an A chord, an E major chord, or sorry, and this is, yeah, well, an A minor chord, okay? This is the one five octave of an A minor chord. And then we get the one octave and major third of E major. 
And how it goes is it goes A minor, E major, A minor. A minor, E major, A minor. Like this. Okay, and then that repeats. Do that on the A chord. I do. I go five, two, one for that fingering. Then for the E, I go one, stretch the octave. Oh, it's fun. Oh, sorry, five, stretch the octave, one, and then either the two comes over or the three comes over. Let's say two. Okay, great so. Okay guys, so now we've learned the whole section, um, now it's time to kind of like put it together and practice it properly. So just a few tips for you, um, whenever you're learning like any piece of music, uh, you don't have to learn, it, learn everything all at the one go. You can kind of learn a piece in stages and you can kind of add layers on. So the first layer is just learning the pitches, thus the notes as they come. The next layer then is learning the fingering. Um, the next thing to do then, once you kind of get a good sense of that and you've worked through it a lot, then I always suggest that you memorize. So everything that you play, you should memorize. Um, so take take your time, and it's better to, to, to deal with small chunks that you can, you can actually kind of make sure you can actually memorize and play, rather than trying to play really big, complicated pieces and you know, the whole time really you're just sight reading the piece. So, uh, you know, break things down into small chunks and memorize, memorize. Uh, so, okay, um, right next, I'm just gonna show you, okay, so how I would just sort of then get someone to practice this. So, once you've kind of played through a good bit, um, we maybe play with a metronome and I get you to play super slow, right? So, maybe. I've set my metronome here to 75 beats per minute and I've just got it just to click without any uh, stresses on any beats because we're in a bit of an odd time signature here, 3-8. So it can be a bit tricky to deal with the metronome. So I just put it where there's no stress on any, any beat. So, uh, okay, here we go. I'm going to play this through at a slow tempo for you. So you can hear there, I'm playing really slow, and you, and you know, that's, um, you know, you might think, oh, that's too slow, you know, if you practice it that slow, like, that's that's easy or whatever, but no, 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 the really good practice is the really slow and controlled practice. That's, that's really what will eventually lead you to being able to play fast and, with, uh, you know, with speed and with confidence, is if you work through all your pieces at that really slow rate, and then once you've done some good slow practice, then you go back and you start speeding it up. Okay, guys, so that's the first part of, of this lesson on Fear Elise. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, please leave a comment and uh, give me some feedback below. Um, if you like, you can support me through my Patreon. And uh, yeah, uh, thanks for everything, guys. Uh, stay tuned for the next video. I'm going to give the B section of this in, in the next couple of videos. Um, and uh, yeah, that's great. Thanks for everything. Bye-bye.